Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Satchdev Sidhu from the University of Toronto in Canada. I'm a professor of molecular genetics, and I'm also the CEO of the Center for Commercialization of Antibodies and Biologics. My group in Toronto is very interested in a field of antibody engineering. This is a method where we use uh, genetic engineering, uh, recombinant DNA technology, and understanding of proteins to design new antibodies, which are proteins that we can then put in the human body uh, to treat diseases such as cancer, infectious disease, um, and many other diseases. So it's a way of making new proteins as therapeutics. And it's also a means of using these proteins for basic research in cell biology to understand how cells work and why disease occurs. Our main findings have been in what we call synthetic antibodies, which are engineered by us um, to work effectively in the human body. Uh, so these are somewhat similar to natural antibodies that exist to fight infection, but because they're engineered by us, they can be very precise, and they can also target cells that cause cancer and other diseases. And the relevance of this is we can make new drugs very quickly based on antibodies that can treat diseases that can't be treated by other methods. Our main technologies are a technology called phage display. It's very technical, but what it lets us do is make very large libraries of billions of different antibodies, but we can make them in a test tube. And then from those billions of different antibodies we've made, we can select only one that has all of the properties of a good drug. So it's a very powerful means of making many, many different antibodies and then finding a single one that can target a particular cancer or a particular virus or a particular bacteria. And then that single molecule we discover, we can make in very large quantities, very pure, and that can be then a drug. So the idea is these technologies of large numbers of antibodies, and among them discovering single antibodies that are effective drugs. What we can now do is much more rapidly develop drugs that are known as targeted therapy, which is the biggest development in cancer. Rather than just randomly killing cells, which is what chemotherapy and radiation does, these new antibody drugs are highly specialized to hit just one protein that is um, problematic in a cancer patient. So you hit only the proteins that are causing a person's cancer. And then the idea is it's much more effective and it's much less toxic. So you don't do damage to the rest of the body, but just target the cancer. And of course, that leads into personalized medicine, where the drug is much more precisely designed to deal with your particular cancer rather than just uh, generally toxic compounds. Another big area has been arthritis, because it turns out arthritis is often caused by proteins in your own body um, attacking um, your body by mistake. So we can make antibodies that neutralize those bad proteins, and in fact this has become very effective for arthritis. The other area is viruses such as dengue virus, Ebola. These are foreign particles in your body and others uh, have designed antibodies that then attack the virus and clear it from the body. So those are two other major areas. And I'm sure as the technology develops, it'll be applied to many other diseases, including people are starting to look at it for Alzheimer's and other uh, neurodegenerative diseases. For Alzheimer's, there are several in clinical trial. For cancer and arthritis, there are many that are already approved. And also for infectious disease, there are approved drugs, but there are many, many more that are coming in the clinical pipeline. Currently, the one problem with these technologies is they're very expensive. So antibody drugs are very precisely designed, and so far that's proven to be uh, much more expensive than other drugs. So unfortunately, um, a limited population is currently benefiting. And our hope is, in fact, as we make the technology better, we can make the drugs cheaper, um, and that's a major challenge for my lab and others to make it not only effective, but a lot cheaper so more people can benefit. Um, that is currently not the case, but that is a, is a goal of, 
um, a lot of research that's ongoing now. Partly why I'm here in India, I'm talking to various groups about how we can work with India uh, to learn lessons about what's actually needed at the practical level of patient care. Because I do think we're going to have to make these kinds of drugs in different ways um, so that they're also cost effective. Antibody drugs have become the largest selling drugs. Currently seven of the top ten drugs are antibodies. And fortunately that's partly because they are so expensive. But at the same time it's also because many patients are being treated. Currently worldwide antibodies are closing in on a hundred billion dollars US per year. So it's, and it's growing very rapidly. And it's expected, in fact, in emerging countries such as India, there will be a very large growth because as people can afford more health care, uh, these are the newest types of drugs. So the, the potential is very large, especially if we can work in the Indian environment so it can be more cost effective. As you can treat more patients, it has more impact. And I think in the end also will be a, um, a more commercially viable drug because currently the patient population is small, but it is expanding, and I think that's where there's a lot of potential to reach more patients. Several collaborations with um, industry partners here, and that's been one of my goals in Toronto, is to work with uh, Indian companies and also universities, because Canada and India are very complementary. Canada is a small country in population, about 30 million but it's very advanced in basic science. India has a much larger population and interestingly is actually very advanced in manufacturing and production. So our hope is um, with the basic research knowledge of Canada, we can quickly discover new potential drugs and then work with countries here that are actually very specialized in producing those drugs. Um, and our hope is that we can then have a Canada-India alliance where we can um, make better drugs faster and more efficiently. The antibodies field is going into more and more therapeutic areas. It started with cancer, now it's in arthritis and other autoimmune diseases, infectious disease, so there'll be many more applications. But I think the other area it has to go, as I said, is in more access to more patients, so better production, more cost-effective distribution. So on the one hand, I think we'll see many more antibodies for many more diseases. And on the production and process level, we'll see improvements that make them cheaper, very much as what happened with cell phones and computers. First, the technology advanced, but then production advanced so it could actually be more efficient. So it's, it's an exciting time because uh, both the technology and the process of just making it available are both becoming much, much better. Five years from now, I expect to see many more antibodies as drugs. That's essentially guaranteed. There are so many of them in the clinic now. So there'll be many more antibodies. But I hope, more importantly, five years from now, the patient population that's treated with antibodies will, will expand a lot. And that would be the major challenge. Um, can we not only make new antibody drugs, but can we expand the population base? And that would definitely be a major goal for the whole um, technology and industry.